Hello ladies and gentlemen, once again this is Jeremy Smith, Photog J the Great. I've been making lots and lots of videos here lately and it finally occurred to me that I hadn't gotten back to my quick lesson videos. And uh, so anyways, last time I left off with shutter speed and I kind of left you guys hanging and we didn't continue on. So I decided to get back to that <clears throat> and uh, we, went, uh, we went from aperture to shutter speed and now we're finally going to get to ISO. Um, you'll also notice I'm using the D5200 for this video. Um, I did notice someone asked me about that. I, I hadn't thought about that, but earlier I was using a D700, which is a pro-level DSLR. So I hope everyone finds this a bit more helpful with me using an intro-level camera. Okay, but on to ISO. I like the interface on this camera quite a lot because it makes it very easy for someone starting out to understand. Okay, but basically on your ISO, um, First off, the other two properties, f-stop and shutter speed, are both physical properties. ISO is not a physical property, so that's something that, that makes it a little bit different. Um, <clears throat> shutter speed, of course, is how long your camera shutter stays open, and it determines you know, how much light is let in in a given period of time. F-stop, or aperture, is how uh, physically wide open or closed down your lens opening is. But ISO, <clears throat> ISO is a sensitivity setting. You're basically changing your camera's sensitivity whenever you change your ISO. But it's an electronic thing that happens. It's not something that's a physical thing. So it's a little bit different. Um, as you know, there's compromises with shutter speed and aperture as well. ISO is no different. The compromise to ISO is the higher you raise the ISO, the grainier your picture is going to be. Um, but the higher the number, the darker lighting conditions you'll be able to shoot in. Okay, so to show you guys here, um, we're using the standard 18 to 55 lens on uh, the D5200 here. And this lens <clears throat> is a variable aperture lens, so if you're shooting at 18 millimeters, it can go all the way down to f3.5, but if you zoom out to 55, the maximum aperture becomes 5.6. So under our current lighting conditions, oh yes, and of course you'll notice this camera's meter. Um, if I move it around, you can move the camera around, you can see the meter changing as it reads the light of different parts of the room. Um, basically the middle part is where the camera thinks the proper exposure is. Right side is overexposed, left side is underexposed. So that's basically how that works. And of course that shows up inside your viewfinder also. Right now, I've got my lens open to its maximum aperture, so it's all the way at 3.5, and you can see how on this camera here, it's one thing I like about this camera, is as you close down, as you go to a higher F number, that little illustration reminds you that a bigger number doesn't mean more light, it means less light, so I love that about this camera. But as you can see, I'm at 3.5 now. <coughs> And I can't go any wider on the aperture. I can't let in any more light with this particular lens. And if you guys remember from the shutter speed video, 1 30th of a second is just way too slow for me to hand hold under these conditions. So I could get out of a tripod, but if I'm forced to shoot handheld under these conditions, the only other thing I could do is to raise my ISO. Now, of course, if I take a shot under these conditions, you can see that we have the proper exposure. So that works out very well. But a 30th of a second shutter speed is a little bit slow here. So really, you know, you guys probably remember the reciprocal rule from the shutter speed video, but ideally, I like to say around a thirtieth of a second or so is kind of the minimum, because you're going to get blur caused by something, whether it be your hands or subject motion if you go too slow. So we can go up to a sixty here. Now, <clears throat> the cool thing about this camera is it will actually show you where your stops are, and basically a stop in photography is anytime you double 
the amount of light. So that's all that really means. But if we go from a 30th to a 60th of a second, we are decreasing the amount of light. Because anytime you go to a faster shutter speed, you're decreasing the amount of light. So by going from a 30th of a second to a 60th, we have basically cut the amount of light we're getting um, approximately in half. So if I take the same shot here, compared to our previous one, you can see the difference in brightness there. And this is that point where the magic ISO comes in. Now, <clears throat> since we are darkening, or since we are getting a photo that's a little bit too dark here, we can't go any wider on our aperture, because our lens won't go any wider than 3.5. So the only thing we can do is raise our ISO. So this is kind of a seesaw effect. So what happens is, if we go from... go from a 30th of a second to a 60th of a second we've cut down on the amount of light but if we go up on the ISO by the same increment we will then make up for it so if I take so I'm going to do this again for you we'll take a photo at 3.5 and 60th like that we'll look at our photo There you have it. Okay. Now we're going to do the exact same thing, but now I'm going to raise, not my flash, sorry. <laughs> I'm going to raise my ISO to 200. And look at what's happening to our meter whenever I do that. So let's see here. If I go back to a 30th of a second, so the meter go back to the middle. Okay. Go to a 60th of a second, it's saying, hey, you're a stop underexposed. But then if we go and raise the ISO by the same amount to 200, look at that. About like magic, it goes right back to the mill again. So now we have gone from underexposed to dead on. And the awesome thing about photography is this is something you can calculate. Um, all these numbers can be quantified. So, if with me knowing that I can't open this lens up any more than 3.5, I know that if I go up in shutter speed to the next level, let's just say I go one more stop up higher, and, and most cameras will change these things in thirds, just like this 5200 does, but notice on, on the little dial here, even though I'm increasing in thirds and I have some areas in between notice all the numbers on the outer side of this dial are actually the full stops so it shows me the thirds in between but the full stops are highlighted okay so as you can see I went from a sixtieth of a second to one two fiftieth of a second so I actually went up two stops and now the photo is going to be two stops underexposed, as you can clearly see. Once again, since I cannot change this aperture to a lower number because of the lens I'm using, I went up two stops on the shutter speed, so that means I would have to go two stops up on the ISO. So we would go from 200 to 400. That's one stop and then from 400 to 800 would make a total of two stops. And look at that. Like magic, we now have a photo that's the right brightness again. So that's basically how this works. It's pretty, pretty simple actually, once you kind of tie it all together. Now, <clears throat> the thing to keep in mind is Depending on what you're shooting, you may find yourself with a different set of variables. So, <clears throat> if I were shooting sports, and I knew that I, let's just say I absolutely wanted to freeze action a lot, then 
I might choose a shutter speed like a 500th of a second, or maybe even higher. But by doing that, there's not going to be as much time for light to come to the camera. So I would raise the ISO to compensate for this faster shutter speed. Sorry, not raise the flash. So see, faster shutter speed or faster shutter speed still, ISO has been raised, and we're basically just compensating. Now, keep in mind the higher the shutter speed, or sorry, the higher the ISO you go to, the grainier your photo is going to become. Um, so you always want to kind of keep your ISO as low as you possibly can. One thing you can do, the main thing that you can do to offset this, is to get a lens that lets in more light. So, if we were to swap lenses, okay, now I have swapped lenses, and I swapped for this 15 millimeter 1.4. So because it goes down to 1.4, it will let in more light. But if we swap lenses like this, we can now get to a faster shutter speed. So if we were shooting action, um, sports or something like that, where we really needed that fast shutter speed, we could get to that faster shutter speed easier without having to raise this ISO as high. So that last photo that we took, was at uh, 1 500th of a second and 3.5 and 1600 ISO and it basically looked like this once we took it just not that zoomed in but because we can go down to uh, 1.4 and by the way from 1.4 to 3.5 it's almost three full stops difference so now we can go down to 1.4, we're at 500th of a second. Now this photo is going to be too bright, as you can see. So now, because we're shooting at 1.4, we have a new way of being able to offset this very, very fast shutter speed. And that will in turn allow us to lower this ISO, which means that we will then be able to have a photo that's less grainy. And there you have it. We have a nice exposure there as well. So that's why photographers spend so much extra money on buying lenses that let in more light. Um, because, well, it's all, all a compromise. If you have more light coming in with your lens, since that's the first thing that happens you know, to, to affect your photo, the first thing that light is confronted with whenever it comes in your camera is your lens. So that's the first thing. Then from there, shutter speed, then ISO. So anyways, um, I hope that helps you guys kind of tie all this together. I am kind of experimenting with the format of these videos. Um, I will do more like this. And um, I plan to do this with some more real world samples. And I'll kind of show you the effects of other things as well, like different lens focal lengths. And... Uh, I'll show you more in detail about um, how, how ISO you know, affects the clarity of your photos. And we'll talk about other things as well. Just uh, write me in the comments below if you have questions. And I definitely want to hear your suggestions as well. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith, Photog J the Great, signing off.